We believe that the knowledge, experience, and insight of low-income young people needs to be integrated into policies and programs designed to improve the conditions affecting them. The members of this council have faced and transcended those conditions and risen into positions of leadership. They have deep knowledge about what enabled them to do that as individuals. What needs, therefore, to be expanded and funded for more young people, as well as what obstacles and injustices still need to be addressed and eliminated. Good everyone. Yeah. Yeah. My name is Shani Jackson and I am from Baltimore, Maryland, and I'm honored to be here today on behalf of the council. As a council, we highly recommend both protecting and expanding pathways to higher education. Every child, despite the, any negative circumstances surrounding their birth or childhood, should have the opportunity to go to a college of their choice and obtain a degree if they aspire to do so. To this end, we recommend affordable and attainable college tuition, both education awards and scholarships to ensure that children stay enrolled in college, low-cost community and state colleges, loans that aren't predatory in nature or burdensome for student borrowers, and protection and expansion of federal programs. We understand that higher education is a critical key towards lifelong success. But we also understand that for many young people in America, there are many barriers and broken pathways on the road to graduation. Personally, this recommendation is very close to my heart because I know what it feels like to be that young person facing many barriers. I was a first-generation college student. My parents were both teen parents when I was born. Neither of them had commenced past the eighth grade, and by the time I was seven years old, they both were dead. I spent a lot of my childhood vowing to break the cycle of poverty within my family. And I thought that I could best do this by being successful academically. And so I was. I did everything that I thought I needed to do in order to go to college. But it soon became very clear once I was in college that financially there were no real supports to keep me enrolled. So without an extended family, I was unable to get any co-signers to loans. I didn't have any personal credit of my own. And I didn't have any mentors to help me really navigate this really confusing process. So, much to my like, <laughs> detriment, I feel like, I had to drop out of college right before the start of my senior year in order to work full time just to save up money to graduate as opposed to just working part time. Initially, I was totally devastated, but I was really blessed and fortunate to come across an amazing organization called Public Allies. Public Allies allowed me to serve within a nonprofit who was already working and doing amazing things within my community. They also allowed me to, you know, work and get money and education awards at the same time. So after two terms of Public Allies, I was really proud to walk away with over $10,000 in education awards to allow me to go back to school and finish and obtain my degree. <laughs> I feel really ashamed, I feel really blessed to have found public allies on my road to graduation. However, there are a lot of young people who have traveled down this road or are currently traveling down similar roads who don't have any supports, who don't have any organizations like that. But there is hope for youth in this situation. Congress right now is uniquely positioned to do more towards protecting and expanding pathways to higher education. Right now, there's the potential to reauthorize the Higher Education Act. This law, would govern, this law governs federal student aid. It was most recently reauthorized in 2008, and it's up for renewal this year. Congress has been holding a lot of hearings and soliciting input to inform this process. This legislation would cover how federal dollars will be divided for both colleges and students. The council would like the House and the Senate to prioritize preserving and expanding Pell Grants because they are important pathways to college for many non-traditional students who don't have the opportunity to get scholarships or get um, educational works. The Senate's Health Committee's draft bill recommends reinstating year-round Pell Grants to enable students to get their degrees faster, and the council also supports this provision as well. The council also supports consumer protections that permit young people from taking on loans that are excessively burdensome or predatory. We strongly believe in the financial literacy and college affordability programs that will help opportunity youth, especially first-generation college students like myself, who need help understanding investments, repealment responsibilities, 
and developing practical plans for reading maps. We need to make sure that college graduation is attainable for all. Thank you.